Welcome to episode three. We're going to take our next step into Disciple the Course by looking at some more of how discipleship gets formed in us. How do we become disciples? In order to do this, I want to take you to the uh, memoir of Mark, chapter one, Gospel of Mark, chapter one, verse 17. And this is where Jesus just begins his ministry. In Mark 1.15, he talks about the kingdom of God has exploded into real life. And now he begins to recruit his team of disciples. The interesting thing is he goes to an entirely different place to find these disciples. He goes to, as I've mentioned in episodes before, he goes to those who are already plying their trade, which means they've already been rejected by all the best rabbis. And he goes along the seashore and he finds some fishermen who are plying their trade with their father in one instance. And he says this to them. He says, come, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. That's his invitation. Now we've talked before about the invitation, come follow me. Um, that is profound, that is significant. Uh, in rabbinic language what he's saying is, I believe you can be like me. I believe you can do what I do. I believe you are worthy recipients of all the teaching, all the equipping I have to offer so that you can carry on those things when I'm off the scene. It's an incredible gesture of belief and confidence. But what follows that is what I want to emphasize in today's episode. Okay? Um, he says this, come follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. There's a connection here. The first thing I want to draw out is this, come follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. There's a connection between them saying yes to following him, moving into what he's doing and where he's going and their formation as those people who are like him. Uh, and he defines that as fishes of men. Let's leave that for a second, but let's talk about this connection. Really what Jesus is saying is something that flies in the face of modern church life. When you want to form somebody, when you want to grow someone in their maturity in Christ, when you want to develop their Christian life or invest in their spiritual growth, what do you do? More often than not, we'll go to a bookstore and buy a book, or we'll get some talks off the, off the net, or we'll, uh, we'll do a Bible study, or we'll get Bible study resources. We'll fill our heads with information, because we believe, we believe information is key to formation. And information is important, but for Jesus, it's not the critical component. It's an ingredient. But the thing that really ignites the whole concoction is this idea of coming and following him. You see, the come follow me not only means confidence in them, but it also is a command. It's a call. It's a lifestyle. He says, come follow me. Now, where was Jesus going that they would go as well? Jesus is going into a life of ministry. He's going into an itinerant ministry across Judea, Galilee, walking the roads, teaching, ministering, healing the sick, raising the dead, um, debating with the Pharisees and scribes. He, he is engaged in a 24-7 mission to bring the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. And he's inviting these young men to come with him. He's inviting these guys to come onto the road into his itinerant ministry with him. Now, we can apply that in our modern day, not only in the idea of full-time vocational ministry, but seeing all of life as ministry. You may work a certain job to pay the bills. That becomes ministry when you hear the call of Jesus to you into discipleship. 24-7, neighborhood, home, family, work, grocery store, traffic jam, this all becomes the itinerant place of ministry because you are now following Jesus into the fields. He says, come follow me. What he means is to begin to look at your life as ministry. He's saying that you will grow, you become, you will grow as you go. And going is a kind of lifestyle. It's a kind of approach to life. What we've been taught in the middle class suburbs is that we need to compartmentalize things and that work is work, family time is family time because we're so busy we have to put it all in its little slots. Jesus throws all our little cubby holes out the window and he says it is all one. Your life is kingdom come 
on earth as it is in heaven. Every context is an opportunity to go and therefore an opportunity to grow. Is that how you see your life? Is that how you see your home? Is that how you see your family? I was, I, I was uh, doing an internship a few years ago and, and my mentor in this internship said to me, he said, listen, Jim, as you're going into a life of vocational ministry, I want to challenge you. When you get home from the office at the end of the day and you grab the doorknob and you're just about to go into your home, you're not off work. In fact, actually, you just stepped into the most significant context of your ministry that there will be in your life. You see, for some of us, we go, okay, I'm going home, I'm off the clock. But in a real way, what, it, what Jesus is saying is, come follow me begin to move into all the arenas of your life with an itinerant ministry perspective. And when this mental approach begins to be released, this is when the becoming growth happens. For some of you, this will mean stepping out into the community in intentional ways. For some of you, some of the most significant ministries you have will hope it will happen without stepping too much into the public sphere. You'll be impacting your neighborhood and your, your family and your, your place of work. You'll be engaging those contexts in new ways. But, then, but in either sense, whether it's in the public square or in your neighborhood or in your place of work or in your family, as you engage kingdom come in those contexts, those become the places of spiritual formation. And you begin to take shape as a disciple. You grow as you go. But I want to emphasize just in, in, in a little caveat here to this first point of following me being the key to becoming is I just want to look at the Greek word here for become because this word is defined in some very visual ways and I want to give, give it to you. The word become can be translated also come into existence. So something that wasn't actually begins to live. And who's the author? Jesus says this, come follow me and I will make you become. So as we go, what this grow looks like is Jesus acting upon us in the fields of ministry to shape us and form us. He gets his hands on us. The hands on the clay as the, as the sculptor are most active as we go. But it's Jesus' hands on us, not us forming ourselves. And it's this beautiful image of coming into existence as we go. Another way it could be translated is to come upon the stage. And you know the hoopla that on, in the West End or on Broadway that, that accompanies an actor's debut in a certain play or a role. And it's this sense to where, to where you've been in the wings and you've been off the stage and, and now the opportunity for you to come onto the stage into the role you were built for, into the role he has set apart for you. You step onto that stage and as you are on that stage you are he is shaping you more and more into that person to have that role and have that impact. It's a beautiful image of what it means to become spiritually. He causes us to come into existence, to come upon the stage of the world so that we might broker his kingdom in this world. 